Hello friends, this is Govan here. A popular topic on one of my videos which really blew up over uh, this last few weeks since I posted it was uh, one of an occult or spiritual nature and while that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, I wanted to talk more about some other topics related to that since it seemed to be so popular. Now that topic was on egregores or tulpas which is sort of the mental construction of uh, an entity, you could say, and then intending that to be uh, a sentient entity. Now, if you want to know more about what I'm talking about, uh, I actually made this video a response to that one, so you can always go through the link which is below this video uh, as a video response. And the topic of entities themselves is an interesting one, which I figured I could expand upon, or at least non-physical uh, entities or spirits or whatever you want to call it. There's a whole range of words from a whole lot of traditions which to name them all would just go on and on. And there's all sorts of different types and things that are benevolent, things that are malevolent, things that are neutral. But essentially the whole concept of something that is real that isn't physical is one that is ancient and is found in every single culture. We really cannot simply say, well, because science can't prove it, it does not exist. Well, I'm not saying that you have to believe in it if it's not your view of the world. You can't have a basis for dismissing it because it's simply unknown. And as long as it's unknown, there's going to be different perspectives on it. There's going to be uh, advice around dealing with this sort of thing. And if you are someone that has experienced this type of thing, uh, you can probably benefit from this kind of knowledge because uh, some people run into trouble with these types of things. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to say, outside of a religious context, I'm not religious. I won't stand for religious uh, proselytizing on my channel. Uh, anyone trying to just blanket label all non-physical things that aren't angels or God, or if it was the same idea from another religion, your comment will be deleted and you'll be blocked, because that kind of rhetoric and that kind of uh, ignorant, non-substantial reasoning is not tolerated on any of my videos. But essentially, in some of my videos, I've always talked about perceiving or understanding the spiritual world much in the same way that you would look at people in day-to-day -day life, or even animals in day-to-day -day life. There's going to be people out there who are neutral, there's going to be people who are very kind to you, there's going to be people who are horrible to you. And some of the worst people might be nice to you, and some of the best people, at least by social standards, might be really awful to you. It all depends on the circumstances of your interaction with that person. Uh, we could even expand it further and say, you know, animals, there's going to be animals that are friendly to you, there's going to be animals that are neutral and almost afraid of you, and there's going to be animals that attack you if you're encroaching on it in some way. So the same thing with various types of spirits, entities, uh, demons, angels, whatever have you there's going to be a range of things that they could do that will impact you positively, negatively, or not at all, really. There are certain ideas in certain traditions that all things have life, or all things that have life, like plants, animals, mushrooms, and bacteria, have an entity or a spirituality to them that has consciousness. Uh, this might be beyond some people's grasp or perception. However, my own personal experience with that uh, a big one being with plants, as an herbalist, if I were to go out and dig up a whole bunch of plants for the specific purpose of consuming them in a, a fashion to be better for my health, I have to be extremely respectful of the fact that that's a living thing. On a more than one occasion, and this is how I learned this lesson, there'd be things that you know I was digging up and were actually kind of considered to be a weed or something from someone's lawn, and so. In my thinking, you know, this isn't something in the wild, this is someone in someone's lawn. They want to rip it up anyway, so I'm going to just go about and dig up every single dandelion in the yard to use the roots and leaves. But in doing so, I was forgetting the respect part that I would normally have if I was, say, in a forest digging up dandelions. And I made a tea out of the roots, and I had this nagging negativity hanging over me. I never had any specific manifestation or clear indication that this was intervention by some sort of plant spirit, but for about half a day or even full 24 hours, I felt like I just had this cloud around me and I was 
off, I couldn't get stuff done, and I was feeling kind of down. And it wasn't until I kind of thought about it for a second, what I had done, it suddenly came to my mind, and I just offered my gratitude and appreciation for the plants that I took and for their life to provide me with medicine. And in doing so with conviction and a real conscious intent, that feeling just suddenly vanished instantly. So this wasn't some, you know, low blood sugar, slight headache from a difficult day or dehydration or what have you. It was literally 100% correlated with whatever I was experiencing on this mental level with some sort of interaction, perhaps by an outside force. So even though these were dandelions in someone's yard who wanted me to dig them all up because they didn't want them there, and they would have done it anyways, in my doing so, I should have still maintained that respect and that appreciation for the plant uh, in harvesting them. Now, I'm sure had I ignored that, that oppressive feeling, whatever it was, might have dissipated or it might have lasted for a few days, but I would have gotten through it. It might not have set me in bed with some severe illness or anything like that. However, you hear in folklore and things, many tales are similar, but they can be more severe. And what happens if someone is simply not attuned to this in any way, they get sick, they have no idea what's happening, and this is something that affects them. It might cause permanent damage in a very subtle way, or if it's a really bad sickness, in a worse way. And this is where shamans and witches and uh, a lot of these traditional practitioners in various indigenous cultures would have been able to address an illness. They would help a person overcome whatever issue they had with an outside force that is causing their problem. You really have to wonder what happens when there's mass deforestation or mass drilling of certain areas of nature and there's huge disturbances on land that has a certain spirituality to it. What's being released? What spirits or entities or what have you are getting angered? Who are they going to take that aggression out on? Most likely uh, the workers taking down the logs, perhaps if they're a more intelligent or higher intelligent type entity, they might have the wherewithal to follow the structure of the company or organization that's taking down the land and accost or seek to harm you know, CEOs and things like that. Now, this might seem all very far-fetched to you, but you really have to almost see everything that's happening on the world as having its spiritual reflection of what's going on on a spiritual level. There's forces battling all the time, but there's also, of course, uh, mutual agreements and uh, relationships that are building all the time, whether conscious or not. And I think as people, if you choose to be aware of these things and I guess to some degree believe in them or think that that's how you perceive things, you can use that to your advantage and you can help ease the flow of your life through paying respect, honoring, and uh, being conscious of these interactions. And you can also kind of pick up on problems that are occurring uh, ahead of time if you're dealing with someone or you're experiencing something yourself. That could be an alternative route as opposed to always going to, you know, strictly looking at nutrition and what supplement I need to take to change this feeling I have, or maybe I need to go on this medication because I'm depressed or whatever is going on. Quite often there is another side to things that are going on. One thing I've kind of seen from reading a lot of work from exorcists, spiritual healers and things of that nature is that uh, often they'll either through healing work or through witnessing a loved one go through this, they often can perceive things going on with really severely ill people, specifically more mentally ill people, that has this spiritual side to it. Um, in one case I'm thinking of someone who visited the son of his best friend who was uh, suicidal and he just got this visceral visualization or this image of this demon completely overwhelming this, this uh, kid or a young teenager or a young adult and he wasn't really in the setting, it wasn't his place to do a healing on him or help try to help this uh, individual but he had just had that own personal experience of it and within few weeks or months after that interaction he heard that this kid had taken his own life. So this isn't to say that we should project our blame or uh, create a scapegoat for problems in our lives. That is a way of avoiding the issue to some degree. However, if that's part of the issue, we have another means of dealing with the issue to help overcome it. 
to talk more about benevolent or positive interactions that we might have with non-physical world, I think everyone who uh, is open to these things can probably think of one or hopefully many more uh, interactions or experiences they've had where you just experience something really good in terms of a feeling in your body in some way or it could be uh, a wonderful event or a sort of an auspicious type circumstance that comes about through an interaction in some way. Uh, the, uh, the list is endless as to what could be connected with and what could initiate and cause these things but uh, the more you're grateful for these things and the more you cultivate the intent to have those kinds of experiences uh, I think that's what we can term progress on a spiritual path is the movement towards uh, a more wonderful life through the interactions with the non-physical world and the intent to make the positive side grow. So we we'll use the negative or the malevolent experiences in life or interactions with non-physical entities or the world in general as a way of guiding us towards how to fix those mistakes and then head, like I'm saying, towards more beneficial, benevolent, happy experiences in life. So let me know what you think in the comments below and hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time.